Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I do head external affairs for NERC. I will violate the rule. Um, we have a rule that once the acronym is explained, we can go ahead and blast through it. That's because I work with 500 engineers who don't know how to talk any other way. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. I started my career in state government, so I have a special affection and affinity for the work that you do. I want to thank you for all the efforts that you make, the accomplishments that you make. Um, you have tough jobs and you have an awful lot on your plate. Um, it is my hope today to talk to you a little bit about what NERC does uh, and hopefully be able to offer uh, some assistance and identification of some resources for you uh, as you struggle with uh, reliability issues and, and things that come forward. Um, I think Brian did a good job of kind of giving you an outline of the details of the system and, and some things that occur on the system. But the bottom line is the, the power grid is a very complex system. Uh, it is a large machine with a lot of different factors. Uh, industry and regulators have spent a lot of time and a lot of money to make sure that system works. Um, our customers, ratepayers, have paid a lot of money uh, to make sure that it does work, and they expect it to work. But as Brian showed, sometimes it doesn't. And we all remember uh, 2003, we just passed the 10-year anniversary of that. But what a lot of people don't know is that it happened before. In 1965, there was also a Northeast blackout. Industry got together at that time and determined that there was a need to develop voluntary standards. And industry pulled this together themselves. Um, they realized there was an imp every action that they do has a reaction, and there was a need to get together on voluntary standards. So with that, that, co that started the conversation about reliability in, in a much more comprehensive manner. Um, around the 90s, there started to be further conversation of moving that into a more mandatory regime. Uh, you then had 2003 occur, and that, fast forward, uh, led to the Energy Policy Act being adopted by Congress in 2005. That included a chapter on reliability. And in that chapter, it set up a requirement for FERC to certify an electric reliability organization. Uh, now, you might ask yourself, when, when they did that, why, was, why did they set it up that way? Um, why was it established that way? Well, there are two important reasons, especially for your consideration. One, this was to deal with reliability of the bulk power system, not distribution. Distribution, um, the lines that go into your homes, that is the arenas of the states, and there's a distinction between that. But secondly, the problem for Congress was we have an interconnected grid. Um, as our friends from Ontario know, it doesn't stop, power does not stop at the border. Because of that, you cannot have a federal agency in charge of grid reliability. So that's why the Electric Reliability Organization was created. NERC was certified as that organization in 06. Um, it, we are a private nonprofit entity, um, but the statute gave us the authority to set mandatory standards. It also gave us the authority to enforce those standards with fines of up to a million dollars a day. It's a very unique organization. Think to yourself how many times you meet with representatives from municipalities, representatives from electric cooperatives, investor-owned utilities, uh, guys like Brian, state regulators. Put them all in a room. How many times do they agree? It is our job to, in a consensus organization to put them in the same room, have them write mandatory standards that the industry themselves will follow and to do that in a way that applies to all of our 1900 registered entities. You, it is not an easy job. They are technical standards. Uh, Congress recognized you had to have the engineers, the experts write these standards because of that. Um, so the biggest criticism we often get is our standards take a long time. True. Not snap-on tools. At the same time, um, since I came in 2010, Jerry Colley was our new CEO. He structured an approach that is far more aggressive on seeking efficiencies in our standards process and movement with the compliance um, programs that we have. The audit and compliance programs are run through our eight regional entities. You'll see some similarities in some of the mapping here, uh, but they are distinct independent organizations and they're responsible for compliance. Uh, they go out, they audit the industry. Our programs are varied. Uh, I've talked a little bit about our standards. I've talked a little bit, um, just to reiterate a few things that, that Brian said. Our standards address things like relay misoperations, vegetation management, operating and planning. Um, vegetation management stands out in our mind because obviously 2003, that was identified as one of the primary causes of that cascading outage. 
This last year, we did a state of reliability report. That issue is no longer in the top 10 of causes and concerns on reliability. So there's been significant improvement. Uh, a short synopsis, the standards are working. They're doing their job. Uh, that's a good thing. Bryden asked me to spend a little bit of time on our reliability assessments division. And I think this is where we can be of the biggest help to you in your job. Um, we put out several reliability studies. We do three major assessments every year. We do a summer assessment, a winter assessment, and then in the, at the end of the year, we do an update, an annual update of a long-term 10-year outlook. Within these studies, and between us friends, they have great executive summaries, so you don't have to read 300 pages of engineering knowledge. Um, but the executive summaries are going to tell you the things that we're looking at, the things that we're watching from a reliability point of view and what we concentrate on. Uh, for instance, this summer, each one of you individually will recognize some of these. The drought issues, reserve margins in the south, what the impact is of a major nuclear plant not restarting in the west. Um, so issues like that we focus on. One in particular um, that we did, besides these three major assessments that they do, we learn things from these. These things tell us. They identify things for us. Industry brings us issues. So we also do special assessments. So there's a separate tab that will take you to some special assessments. And within those, we looked at integration of variable generation. We looked at geomagnetic storms. And since you're dealing with energy and environment today, I'll spend a little bit of time on the report we did a few years ago on the EPA regulations. Industry came to us and saw a convergence of several environmental regulations coming to a head at the same time. And the concern that was expressed was how are we going to manage this? If you know engineers, it's not what the issue is, it's how are we going to solve the problem. We took a look at this and put out a report um, that got a lot of attention because we identified four environmental regs, we did not look at climate, that the convergence of which would create the potential for localized reliability impacts on the system. We do not judge whether these policies are good or bad. That is not our job. We leave that to the policymakers. It is our job to raise a flag when there is a reliability issue that's going to make sure or create problems for ensuring reliability, which is our number one goal. So we identified those regulations, but we just didn't identify it. We also suggested issues and talked and made recommendations. We made recommendations to regulators, made recommendations to NERC, made recommendations to the industry. Um, it did get a lot of attention. And just for fun, take a look at the proposed rule on MACT, and then take a look at the final rule. You're going to see the word reliability used numerous times in that final rule. I'll take personal pride in that. It wasn't the only reason. Um, but we did raise the attention. And to EPA's credit, they listened. They made some adjustments in the rule. They added an extra year. Uh, there were some things doing. And, and they're still engaging in conversations with the industry. But that's our job is to bring that forward to allow um, the industry and others to get to a point. It's still not perfect. We're still working on that. We still monitor that. We did an update in the long-term reliability assessment last year. Um, and, but that's an example of the type of things that we do with these studies. These are all on our website. They're all available for you, and they can be a resource for you in that regard. Um, I'm going to go over this and um, skip over this, um, if I can get to the next one, in the interest of time. But we also um, did a state of reliability report. We also do um, major investigations of outages that do occur. We had some outages in 2011 you may be familiar with. Um, San Diego issue that woke our Mexican friends up because they lost their intertie line that we have in Baja. Um, we also had a, a cold freeze outage in New Mexico and Arizona and Texas. Uh, it indicated we investigate those, we issue lessons learned, we get it out to the industry to make sure it doesn't happen again. Probably the most significant area of focus for us um, these days is cybersecurity. Um, I'll just spend a short period of time on that. i um, not sure what your interest level is in that regard. But I want to make sure, um, but the one thing I do know, you read the newspaper. And in the newspaper, you hear every day that the electric grid is getting attacked, the electric grid is being attacked. Dwayne Hegley from the Arkansas Cooperatives testified to Congress recently. And state made a very important distinction. A majority of those attacks are no different than what you and I see on our business systems, what we don't know what's happening on our own personal computers every day. Um, it doesn't mean that control centers are not a target. It does not mean that they aren't a concern. But we have standards that address that. Um, but to date, knock on wood, there has not been a successful attack on a US-based control system. 
It does not mean that the threat actors are not looking at that. It does not mean they are concerned about that. But I think the industry deserves uh, a little credit for having, we have nine cybersecurity standards. Um, we have our fifth version in front of FERC for approval. Um, it is the most comprehensive set of standards. Um, it will be the, probably um, the most risk-based focus set of standards that we have. So as soon as that gets approved, that'll be our next step. But I look at our standards as foundational. And I, I try to explain to people that what NERC does is really a two-pronged attack to address cybersecurity. We have our standards which provide foundational security, but this world of cyber is very fast. Once these threat actors are in, they're trying here on a phishing attack. They're going to move left or right as soon as they figure out something works or doesn't work. Because of that, we have to have a much faster acting response to the industry. So we operate the electric, electricity sector, Information Sharing Analysis Center. Here's another acronym, an ISAC. Every infrastructure has an ISAC, um, but you'll probably find financial services and ours to be probably the more, two of the more sophisticated um, ISACs. We have analysts who have top secret clearances who work with the government, go into classified space, are made aware of the issues um, and the threat actors and, and issues that are happening. We'll take that information, declassify that information, and issue alerts out to the industry. We have two ways of doing those alerts. We have one which is a public alert where we can send out and tell them, you know, these are things you should be looking for. Uh, these are not mandates. Uh, these are recommendations and, uh, and awareness because a lot of it is based off of the standards. And then the second kind is where we can't declassify it. We have a secure communication portal um, set up with industry. We can actually reach more than our 1,900 registered entities. And we send out information, here's what you should be looking for. This entire system depends on two things. It depends on information sharing from the government. We need to get a little better at that. It needs to be more things, but they're working on that, and there's, there's better things happening. Uh, some recent events haven't helped that opportunity, but, but it's there. Uh, and, and the industry does a good job of communicating with us if they see things. But it's our guys who can take it, okay, if we hear from AEP, but we also hear something in Montana, or we also hear something in Texas. It's our analysts, I call them our Jack Ryans, who sit there and take a look and make the comparisons, take a look and say, okay, is there a nexus here? And let's get information out to the industry so they know how to react to it. My cyber guys always ask me to include this slide. We think we know a lot. We think we're doing a lot, but it is, we always know there's a lot more out there that we don't know. And we have to constantly be vigilant. Um, this is a, a serious issue, but from the bulk power system perspective, um, there are a lot of things that we are working on and a lot of things that we are doing uh, to address it. Uh, it, it we, one never says we're secure. We, we have a constant focus on this, um, but I hope um, I'm able to provide you with some information to let you know that we have a lot of efforts going on to address it. Um, we do um, some other exercises. We do a grid security conference. Um, we exercise the industry as well on cybersecurity threats. Um, so these are just a few examples of some of the things that we work with industry on to make sure that we're addressing. We're doing an outreach program um, in eight states with DHS, DOE, FERC, um, and ourselves uh, and industry to talk about physical security. Had a few incidents recently on physical attacks. Um, we're dusting off some of the guidelines that we already had in place, just reminding everybody of what's out there and what is um, possible. So a lot of things are going on in this area, but our result is to have this map not Brian's map. But this is what our goal is to keep the lights on. Um, this is our vision of ensuring reliability for the bulk power system. Uh, so I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you a little bit about our efforts and I'm happy to answer questions after everybody else is finished. Thank you.